This is Twit. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about the big job at AMD. So Raja left in November. Uh, he was the, the the lead of the Radeon Technologies Group. Also a big fan favorite from you know the the, the AMD fans out there. He was he was pretty. Uh, pivotal in like the marketing and social side of it. He talked a lot sure. about that t- that type of stuff and was involved. He came out here and did videos with us. Um, he was engaged with the community. So when he left to go to Intel, it was uh, a bit of a shock. And AMD spent, I think, longer than some people expected trying to find replacement of who would lead it. So in the interim, right. AMD CEO Lisa Su took over. And obviously her, her job is scales or spans many different areas. So I'm not exactly sure how much time she was able to spend, you know, looking at the RTG specifically, but I think it was actually more significant than most, most would look because she's, she spent a lot of time looking at the resources, looking at the roadmap, looking at the personnel, Mm -hmm. trying to figure out what the current state was before they dedicated themselves to finding the right person to replace them. And what they actually did was they hired two different people, uh, one to manage the business side and one to manage the engineering side. So Mike Rayfield comes from uh, Micron. Uh, previously, before that, he was at NVIDIA. He was kind of responsible for the creation of the Tegra brand and and bringing NVIDIA into that into that area. Um, he <laughs> so he's kind of going to be the head of the of the Radeon Technologies Group from a business standpoint. His job is to sell product both to consumers, to enterprise, to semi custom partners, which is a new addition into this group. So whereas before, like the semi custom parts that include the Xbox and the PlayStation design wins, as well as the Intel Kaby Lake G part were under kind of more the enterprise and embedded group. Now they're directly under Radeon, which I think makes more sense because mm-hmm. honestly, it's the Radeon IP that makes those semi-custom designs useful, right? Or, or differentiates right. them in the rest of the market. So that's his responsibility. Uh, David Wang comes in as coming from, he was at AMD from 2002 to 2012, uh, went mm-hmm. to Synaptics for a little while and now is back there. And he has a lot of experience on the GPU side. So, you know, he was part of the GPU development and engineering team from 2002 to 2012. And people who have, you know, know their, their computer hardware history, understand that, there were a lot of good times in that window where AMD had AMD ATI and AMD had leadership positions in performance and efficiency. They had great products. They had good marketing and, and uh, everything was kind of working. So he understands where they need to get back to, which I think is important. And um, he just has a lot of experience in that, in that space, which is surprisingly hard to come by there. You know, there are a lot of companies willing to hire GPU designers these days from Apple to arm to, Qualcomm sure. to Tesla to whoever. Um, so getting somebody with a lot of experience is, is a more difficult task. Uh, the, the problem that I think for consumers, people that watch this show that are interested is, okay, well, what's going to change and when? And it's a longer process than most want to be the case. Just because you bring in right. new executives doesn't mean something changes overnight. You know, on the business side, you might be able to renegotiate contracts or start new deals or start new campaigns right away. But from an engineering standpoint, like if there was something fundamentally wrong with the GPU design and you wanted to start over, that's a three-year deal. If you want to take the current design you have and massage it into something better, you know, probably a minimum of a one-year deal. Um, so even if David is the most brilliant magician of uh, computer and electrical engineering that we've ever seen, the, the world's ever known, uh, he's not going to come in and, and next quarter have Navi out early on an early process technology uh, releasing and beating NVIDIA overnight, right? It's just it's just not <laughs> how this type of stuff works. Right. What it does mean is AMD's, they've set a path. They, uh, <sighs> they know what direction they're going to go in. I would like to see them talk about that path. Mm-hmm. Talk about their roadmap and what their plans are. Put put a stake in the ground and then let's set a goal and see if they can meet it. I don't know how quickly they would be willing to do some of that stuff. But um, I think it's good news for, for AMD overall. There's no more cloud hanging over them about who's sure. going to fill this position. You know, when we when we did our CES meetings, when we did this this press briefing, Lisa came out and talked about the GPU side for a little bit, which seemed a little odd because every other division had their leads come out and talk about it. And then, um, you know, we didn't really have a Raja replacement up on stage telling us about, telling us about their, the future of graphics. So um, that should change now. We, ha- we have the right people in place according to them. So now let's 
see if they can make up ground and build new products and compete against NVIDIA and solve the cryptocurrency mining crisis at the same time. I don't know. Make them do everything. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Somebody fix it, please. 